In the previous movie, we set up Servo's animation state machine to link its idle and run clips together. In this movie, we'll create the gameplay logic necessary to trigger these states using Flow, Stingray's visual programming system. Open the level Servo Basic Movement from your current project. You can also use the files provided with this movie by merging them into a new Stingray project. Click the green play icon to test your level. You can orbit around Servo using either your mouse or your game controller. Servo is currently in its idle state. We need to toggle its run state based on an input control such as a game controller, keyboard, or touch controls. Press the escape key to exit the test level window. Right click the servo unit in the level and select open to launch the unit editor. The unit editor gives you control over many elements of your unit's basic properties and constituent pieces. The outliner displays the contents of the imported unit file such as servo's meshes and joints. Go to the unit flow tab. This is where you'll create your unit's gameplay logic by building flow graphs. Note that the unit flow is different from the level flow. The level flow contains the logic you want to apply to the whole level, such as spawning units, triggering story events, and applying camera controls. This specific flow graph controls our camera's orbit function at runtime. You can learn more about it in our Controlling Game Cameras in Stingray series. The unit flow, on the other hand, handles the logic specific to a given unit. We'll use it to define Servo's movement controls. Right-click the Unit Flow Graph area to access the Node Library. Under Inputs, choose the desired Game Controller input. Set the node's thumbstick port to left. A quick way to display what a node outputs at runtime is to use a Print to Screen node. However, since we're trying to connect a vector data type to a string data type, we'll need to pass a value through a vector to string conversion node. Save your unit flow graph. This creates a new flow file alongside the servo unit. Test your level. Moving the thumbstick displays its vector output, ranging from negative 1 to 1 on the x and y axes. Delete the debug nodes. Then, create a vector length node to measure the output vector's magnitude. By comparing the vector's magnitude to an arbitrary value, we can figure out if the player is moving the thumbstick, and, by extension, if servo is running. Create a numeric greater than node, and connect it to the length node. Set the B port to 0.01. Next, create a branch node to evaluate the flow graph. A true output leads to servo running, while a false output leaves him idle. Create two send animation controller event nodes and connect them to the branch node's outputs. Set these two nodes' event ports to two run and two idle, respectively. Connect a level update node to the branch node to make Stingray evaluated on every frame. Save your unit flow graph and test your level. Moving the thumbstick triggers Servo's run animation event, and releasing it triggers its idle event. Next, let's control Servo's rotation using the thumbstick's output vector. Create a set unit local rotation node. To convert the vector output into a rotation input, we'll use a rotation from vectors node. Connect the axis value port to the forward port. Set the up port to a 001 vector to match our level's Z up world axis. Connect the rotation output to the set unit local rotation node. Also connect its import to the branch node's true output so servo only rotates when we move the thumbstick. Save your unit flow graph and test your level. 
Moving the thumbstick now rotates servo freely around its own z-axis. However, notice that servo's rotation only matches the thumbstick's direction when the camera is positioned behind it. This is because we're rotating servo on its local axis without taking into account the game camera's own rotation. As a result, we need to retrieve the camera's rotation using a Get Camera World Rotation node. Connect it to a Get Active Camera node to specify the camera to use. Now right-click the Rotation from Vectors output connection and insert a Rotation Addition node to combine this rotation with the camera's rotation. Save your unit flow graph and test your level. Servo's rotation now accounts for the camera's rotation. However, this also causes Servo to rotate around its three axes instead of just the z-axis. This is because we've been using the camera's full XYZ rotation. Since we only need its Z-axis, we'll extract it using the Rotation Components node. Repeat this for the Rotation from Vectors node so the data types match. Now replace the Vector Addition node with a numeric one and then combine the Z component ports. Use a Rotation from Components node to construct a rotation from the resulting value and connect it to the Set Unit Local Rotation node. Save your unit flow graph and test your level. In the next movie, we'll give Servo some traction by implementing a movement flow graph with collision detection.